when we're going to be starting right now. So if you are standing up and have your packet, please find a seat. And we'll get going. Okay. Oh, you can do that. What's the other name? Okay, so good evening and welcome to each of you, especially to our Susan B. Anthony School parents and community members. I'm Principal Yang, and I want to say thank you to each of you for coming to tonight's community meeting. I know this is a very important student conversation to have, and I would like to thank each and every one of you in advance for discussing this topic in a dignified way. Let's make this one here tonight a representative of our tribe as we discuss about this topic tonight. And to make one that represents our community. I'd also like to acknowledge the support of the district for providing our school team with the setup of this meeting. With that said, before I introduce tonight's presenter, I would like to say this. Remind everyone that there are interpreters in the back, especially for Spanish and Hmong. So if you need translation, please go back there and get a headset for yourself. Also, at this time, I'd like to say that we have child care available for children 2 and up, located in rooms 13, 14, and 21. Spanish is on there. Wouldn't it be better if we had Spanish. conversation with and with instead of with conversation? You know what I'm saying? Because I don't understand a lot of languages here. And for you to go over here and say, well, there's interpreters. We need to talk together. Everybody here needs to talk together to know what's going on right now. Not here, there, here, there. Didn't work last time I was here, so I'm just letting you know I didn't understand. So, interpreter is one thing, but two people got to stand up there, like the president. Okay, we're trying to do simultaneous. I think it's, it's the same concept, so we're going to do our best. I'll come back and talk to you more about that. Okay? okay? Thank you. And also, bathrooms are outside near the front office. Uh, and the doors are open, so as you exit these doors, you will see the lights coming out of the bathroom, kind of a signal uh, to, for you to find your way back over there. For the adults, you're going to require a key. And I think James is right there, back there. You see the gentleman waving the key? He has a key to the adult bathroom, OK? So finally, before I leave the podium tonight, I just want to remind each and every one again that we do, we, we carry this conversation in a dignified way to represent our community. And um, I will do the same as well. Um, at this time, I'd like for you to join me to give a Susan B. Anthony Pride welcome to our facility tonight. And that is Mr. Jesse Serna. Please welcome. Good evening, everyone. Again, thank you, as Mr. Yaw said. Again, I want, on behalf of the superintendent, on behalf of our school board, I want to uh, welcome you here tonight and thank you for, for coming this evening. And I know many of you probably have put in the full day's work, uh, but, but your being here shows the commitment to your children, to your school, and to this community. So we thank you uh, for being here tonight. Uh, again, I want to thank Mr. Yaw for his leadership here and, and ensuring that he created an environment here uh, so that folks can come in and, and tell us what you need to tell them tonight. So this is what the evening will look like a little bit. We're going to do a, a, a presentation to you, give you some general information about uh, what led us to the decision to, to, to recommend the right sizing of the district. Um, that should take 15 to, about 15 to about 20 minutes. And then we're going to open it up to, to, mem to all of you to share with us kind of your concerns, uh, your thoughts, and then we'll be recording all of those. Um, as you can see, we have a flip chart stand on the left, uh, to my left and on the right, and we'll be 
recording everything that you're saying to us, and we'll present that back to our school. Um, in addition, all of the material that we have available is available to you in the back. So please, you can pick up um, all of that material. In addition to that, there are cards in the back that if you're not comfortable uh, speaking at the, the microphone, you can, you can uh, give us your concerns in writing. And we'll also take that back to the board and for leadership team. As, as Mr. Yaw said, we know these are difficult conversations. These are very, very difficult decisions. I will tell you, uh, this is my 30th year in this business. And I was saying to somebody earlier, I think it was the CEO of the president. You know, the ha happiest days in my career is when I got a chance to be part of the tradition. The hardest days of my career, and I'm forcing you to be in these kinds of Because I know it affects you as a parent. I know it affects this community. Um, but uh, we're faced with a financial situation that um, we have, for the most part, left, been left with very few alternatives. The last thing I want to talk about uh, before we get into the presentation, and that's what Mr. Yaw talked about. Uh, on your left, or on your right here, and on your left here, are some ground rules in terms of how we would like the meeting to be conducted today. Again, we want to encourage you to give us your feedback, but we hope and we know, based on what we know of this community, it will be done in a respectful manner. You know, we have children here, and all of us, whether we're a parent or we're an educator, we want to be good role models for those children. And, and I, I know you will do that in the manner in which you'll be expressing your concerns to us tonight. So, uh, what I would ask is, after each person speaks, uh, that you hold your applause. Because we want to give everyone a chance to express their opinion, and it may be different opinions here. But we want people to feel comfortable enough and free enough to be able to express those. So we're going to ask you to please just to hold your applause. I know there's going to be a desire to do that. If you want, I know at the board meeting we do the, the silence of applause, and if you could do that, that would be fine. The other thing that we're going to ask is the meeting is scheduled to end at 9. We want everyone, uh, anyone who wants to speak, uh, give them a chance to speak. Uh, you'll be given two minutes. Um, if you have spoken and you feel you need to come back because you didn't say what you needed to say, the only thing we would ask is give everyone else a chance also to, to have the opportunity to speak so that everyone who wants to speak gets a chance to speak. Okay? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Sure. Uh, my name is Jeff Cerna. I am the chief. I am I'm the chief. That's kind of a personal thing, but I will tell you that Joe Cerna was my oldest brother. Um, that's a hard thing for me to talk about. Uh, because I'm obviously very proud of him. Uh, I'm the youngest of the family. He was the oldest of my family. I'm the Chief Human Resources Officer of the School District. Thank you for that. Okay, um, we're going to begin then the presentation. So if we can go to slide two. Slide two is a chart that shows uh, the enrollment trend for our school district uh, going back to 1996-97 up to today. And as you can see, that in the year 2001, 2002, and 2000, uh, I'm sorry, 2001 and 2002, we kind of peaked our enrollment there at that time. Our enrollment today in 2012-13, as you can see, has declined significantly. Between that period of time of 2001-2002 to today, we've lost 5,479 students. That's equivalent to 160 classrooms. As a result, if they were completely vacant, would be vacant. This year, we lost a total of 800 students, and we're projected for next year to lose another 800 students for next year. 
there are many reasons uh, for school districts to lose enrollment. One of them is people are having fewer children. Um, the recession and the economic climate has had a significant impact. Um, the fact that families are moving out of the inner city and moving out to suburbs. Um, and then the foreclosure crisis we know has had a significant impact on us losing children. All of those factors and others have contributed to our decline in enrollment here at Sac City Unified. Slide three. Slide three illustrates the enrollment for specifically this school, Susan B. Anthony. And as you can see, the data that we show you on this chart goes back to 1996-97, and that in 19... 97, 98, this school reached a high enrollment of 460 children. And as you can see today, the enrollment at Susan B. Anthony is 279. That's a loss of 181 students, or about 39%. Slide four, please. As I said earlier, nobody wants to close schools. Um, this is a decision that those of us who are in the business of education are not decisions we get into this business to do. But we have a fiscal reality. So on this chart, we show you some comparison to some districts that are similar to us in size and close to us. The first one being San Juan Unified. San Juan Unified, as you can see, has approximately 47,000 students. We also have approximately 47,000 students district-wide. San Juan has 43 elementary schools compared to 56 that we have. That's 13 fewer schools than us. El Grove, which is just, just to the south of us here, they have an enrollment of 62,000 students. They are larger than us. They maintain 39 elementary schools and that school district. Those are that's 17 fewer elementary schools that we have here at Sac City Unified School District. Slide five, please. Declining enrollment has had a direct impact on how we get funding. School districts are funded based on how many students you have enrolled in your district. As a result of the steady decline, over the past five years, we've had to cut our budget a total of $146 million. The result of those cuts, as you can see, have impacted the various uh, uh, positions that are listed on this slide. The reduction of teaching staff, the reduction of custodial staff, the reduction of assistant principals, counselors, librarians, nurses, social workers, maintenance staff, bus drivers, uh, pretty much the elimination of adult education, and cuts in the central office is a direct result of a reduction of our budget of about $146 million. Slide number six, please. This slide illustrates the budget cuts that we've had to make over the last 11 years. Over the last 11 years, our district has had to cut a little over $216 million from its budget. Again, a direct relationship to our enrollment here in this district. Slide seven, please. So what are the consequences if, if we don't act? This next year for the year 13-14, our district, as I said earlier, will be continuing to decline. As I said earlier, this year we're losing 800 students. We are projecting next year we'll lose another 800 students. We're also projected to have a budget deficit coming this next year. By closing the 11 schools, the district will save approximately $2.5 million. Recognize that when we present a budget to the county office and we're required to submit a balanced budget for this year, next year, 
and the year after that, we're required to present a budget over three years. Um, this savings is a cumulative, which means this next year we would save 2.5. Following year that becomes five million, and the following year that becomes seven point five million. Without these actions, we'll have to uh, fill our budget cap, and our options are quite limited to do that. Slide. Slide. Eight. Again. I'm going to take you back to this slide I, I talked to you about earlier. That over the last five years, we've had to cut our budget by $146 million. <laughs> Last year alone, we had to cut our budget by a total of $28 million. I know this school knows this. Uh, you've seen your class sizes increase due to that. You've seen our custodial staff cut due to these budget cuts that we've had to make. Slide 90. So many questions have been asked about Proposition 30. As you know, there was a ballot initiative this last November for Proposition 30. Fortunately, Proposition 30 passed. And there's this belief that as a result of that, we would get additional funding. What Proposition does, Proposition 30 does for us, had it not passed in November, we already had plans in place, agreements with our labor union, to cut the school year 10 days. We would have had to end school 10 days earlier had Proposition 30 failed. Since Proposition 30 has passed, we are allowed to continue our school year as it currently is. We think in the future it will provide maybe some additional funding, but again, Sacramento downtown is making those decisions for us right now. The other question that folks have had is what about Measure Q&R, the bond? That bond initiative does not allow us to address our budget deficit. That bond initiative allows us to refurbish some of our schools that really need to be referred to. We have many old schools in this district, and many of those dollars are going to be targeted towards middle schools and high schools because we know all children will eventually matriculate to a middle school or a high school. So Measure Q&R is not going to help us fix our budget deficit problem. Slide 10, please. So the question is, how did we decide on the schools that were recommended? So let me say this, and I'm going to say it. And, and I, I, I met your PTO president today. And, and again, these are hard decisions. These decisions that we're having to make are not about schools that are bad. These decisions are not about bad principles. We have great decisions. These decisions are not about bad teachers. We think we have great teachers. And the decisions are about bad schools and bad communities. These decisions are based on a fiscal reality that we have to present a balanced budget and that we believe a school district decides is operating too many schools. And we need to be fiscally responsible because if we don't, the consequence of not is that if we are in balance, we continue to deficit spend, the state would take us over, and then the state makes those decisions, not the school board and not staff. So the process that we used was based on fiscal facts. What we did was we determined what the school capacity was versus what the school enrollment was. And then we listed those schools in, in, in inverse order. So the school that had the highest capacity with lowest enrollment was at the top. We took schools off the list for two reasons. One, if the school was going to be receiving 
children from those schools that were closing, they would come off the list. And then the second reason were schools that are identified as priority schools and have invested a significant number of resources. Those are schools that have been our most challenged schools that we're trying to help them improve their achievement count. Slide 11. So how did we determine capacity? And I think that's a big question many of you have had. And what we did was literally walk through schools to determine what was teachable space. Now because we have schools that have low enrollment, we have classrooms that would have been classrooms, but have been used for other purposes. Resource room, parent involvement room. But typically, if we had full schools, they would be used as classrooms. So we counted all those teachable spaces where we could put a desk and a student based on what our contractual obligation is with the teachers association in terms of how many students in our class was based on our class maximum. In addition to that, uh, we know our special ed students, those are in smaller classrooms with fewer students, and we use that number to determine the teacher space. Uh, what we did not include in that calculation, obviously, are, are places like libraries that are not places where we can put desks and classrooms. That's how we came up to the calculation with respect to the past. Slide 12, please. As you can see, this slide here illustrates to you capacity versus enrollment. This is the end. Our maximum capacity, based on our calculation, is 757 students. We have an enrollment of 279 students with an enrollment of 36%. So let me say this at this point. We know that calculation, that, that measurement, it's difficult because each school is unique. It's almost its own community. But we, we knew we had to use the same yardstick to measure every school in this district. We couldn't change the yardstick for each and every different school. We wanted to use the same measurement for every elementary school. Slide 13, please. So what will happen to your child? Your new home school at this, for this school would be Evan Kimball, Cesar Chavez. Uh, this was based on, um, we've done tracking of residents and, and, and those um, families um, did will be your home school. With respect to open enrollment, uh, schools impacted by school closure will be given priority for open enrollment. The open enrollment period begins on February 19th and will end on March 8th. At the end of the open enrollment window, uh, your students will be placed in a special lottery first before any other students in the entire district are considered for open enrollment. Then and only then, once we place those uh, students who have opted for open enrollment, will we open up open enrollment for every other student? To apply for open enrollment, parents must submit an online application. If you don't have access to the internet, uh, you can use computers here at your school. We also offer uh, walk-in open enrollment registration on March 6th, 7th, and 8th at the Enrollment Center at 560147th Avenue. And then we also have this information on our website at www.scusd.edu. Slide 14, please. Our number one priority, our number one concern, should the board act on this, is student safety. That is our priority. We are working with the city, the police department, our safe school office, to ensure that we establish safe routes for all students. Slide 15, please. For all families who go to Edward Kimball and or Cesar Chavez, bus transportation will be added for all of those students attending that school, those schools. 
In addition to that, we'll work with the city to ensure safe routes for all children. Size 16, please. So what are some of the benefits of having larger schools? When you have larger schools, you have more students at that school, it minimizes the need to have split classes. Many of our smaller schools, uh, often because kids don't come in perfect packages in terms of uh, numbers to fill a class, so we, we often have to have a K-1 combination or a 1-2 combination, and we know instructionally that's not good for kids. We know instructionally that's difficult for teachers because they're teaching two curriculum. Uh, so when you have uh, more school, more students at schools, we're able to provide complete classes. The other thing I want to assure you of, and there's this kind of um, belief, that as a result of closing schools and then transitioning children to other schools, that we're going to have larger class size. That is not true. We are obligated to have class size as determined by the collective bargaining agreement with the district and the teachers association. So those classes won't be any bigger than they are now. Larger schools also allow for greater collaboration with teachers. When you have a smaller school, you may only have one first grade teacher. They have no one else to collaborate, share ideas in terms of instructional um, strategies. You have more grades at schools, you have three or four first grade teachers that can collaborate and talk about well, what are you doing with your children that I can do with my children to help them uh, improve their learning. Next slide, please. Larger schools also allow for the opportunity uh, for staff to work together. It allows us to pull resources together. It allows us to maintain facilities better because we have fewer. It allows us hopefully to provide better security because we have fewer schools to secure. Um, and it allows uh, for, we believe, greater parent involvement. You know, more parents and hopefully more parent involvement. Slide 18, please. So what are the next steps? We have a board meeting this Thursday, the 7th. The board will not act on the 7th. We will be presenting uh, feedback to the board, some of that that you have given us tonight, and, and there are other schools, and I forgot to mention, and I apologize. Um, Superintendent, Superintendent Raymond, we're doing two schools a night. So Superintendent Raymond is at one of the other schools. They were having the same, same kind of meeting. Uh, we anticipate him being here later on this evening, depending on how long this meeting goes. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. The other thing, I, and I just noticed that we have a couple of board members in our audience. So I want to recognize them. I know I saw uh, board member Rodriguez. Board member Rodriguez. And I see board member Kennedy also in the back of the room. So again, thank you for being here, uh, members of the board. The next, um, as, as we are tonight, we're holding these types of meetings at all 11 of these schools, and they will last up until about the um, next week sometime in 19. And then at uh, the board meeting on the 21st is when the board will act on these decisions. So that is the meeting these decisions will be made. Should the board act on the 21st on right sizing of the district? They will immediately appoint a citizens committee, often referred to as a 7-Eleven committee, and statutorily the charge, or by law, the charge of, of that committee is to determine how we would repurpose or reuse this school. And, and we will uh, go out to the community and get input from the community in terms of what, what kind of services maybe we could provide at, at a facility like this. And there could be a number of different services that we could provide at a facility like this. Next slide. Also part of the next step in terms of the transition, the district will immediately establish the transition team. The team will help develop a, a, a comprehensive plan to address the needs of, of every student and every family with a focus on transportation and safety, uh, supporting families, enrollment and support, and supporting the transition of this new school culture. At this point, that pretty much ends uh, my presentation. Um, 
We have a mic in there. Um, if you drive a Malibu license plate 45HU895, your lights are on. Thank you. As I said, we have mics on your right and to your left. Um, we have scribes on your right and on your left. They'll be recording your questions and your concerns. We will then respond to all of those to you. Um, we'll post those also on our website. Again, we ask you to limit your responses to two minutes and on the screen, you can see there's that clock. Please kind of keep an eye on that. Uh, again, we ask you to limit your responses to the, the two minutes. There are cards also on the back of the room if you'd like to fill out a card rather than coming up and speak. Again, we want to remind you that we, we know that you will represent, as Mr. Yaw said, this community well and express your concerns around, school, around this issue. So again, uh, if you'd like to line up, so, if, if, if uh, our mom parents would like to speak and need translation, if you would come to the mic on this side of the room. If you're a Spanish speaker and you need translation in your in your comments you want to make to us, there'll be a translator on this side of the room. Okay. So if you would line up now, and then I'll, uh, we'll begin taking your comments and your concerns. So let's see, let me start right over, right over there, or on this side also. Ma'am. Hello, um, I am a parent um, here in the area, and um, I feel like I'm last word that the school is. Um, possibly going to be um, First I thought it was based on how many students, so now I'm hearing that it's about capacity. And it doesn't seem to me like Susan B. Anthony is that big, so to me it seems as though it would be at 99% if you're going to base it off the capacity and usage of each um, room. So I would like to know, being that you're saying it that way, that if that's what it's based off of, it appears to me that it is at like 99% capacity for the size of the school and the usage. I would like to know, based off the total capacity, the square footage of this school, how did this school get on the list? Because to me, it seems as though when you do the math, it, it is at 99% capacity. So do I want to ask my next question? Sure, absolutely. The other thing would be, has the board already made a decision to close Susan B. Anthony? Or do we really have a chance to come here and address the situation? It's a great school, it's been here for many years, and we need the school for the community. We need it. So I know you guys are saying that you took it into consideration, but have you also looked at when you take the school away, if you take the school away, what's going to happen to the community? The other thing, I would like to know, are there any new facilities being built? Sorry. Sorry. Are there any new facilities at this moment presently in the works? Anything new coming up for new schools, middle schools, um, high schools, etc.? Because I think that would be unfair to be building new schools knowing that we have these other schools that are supposed to be closed. That money could go towards the schools remaining open. Okay, I think that other question I what I said before. So I really want to know, are you guys, have you really considered, um, well when you said that you, well, that when you're speaking of capacity, are you basing it off of the complete Square footage of the entire area of the school or just each individual classroom? 
Because there's other schools that are much bigger that are, if you want to go by capacity, they're not even at 50% because they don't have complete enrollment. They don't have like, um, they're not at the maximum enrollment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, again, I want to just, and I know this is our first person and we got a long time to go, just to remind you, you may want to keep an eye on the clock so that we get a chance to hear from everybody. We have another car who has their lights on. It's a blue Chevrolet. And is this the license plate number at the top left here? 170028. So there's a, another car with its lights on outside. Okay, we'll have our next speaker. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sandy Lee, and I'm a parent here at Susan B. Anthony. Superintendent Raymond and Vice Board members, we have a common understanding. We understand that we are in an economic crisis and that tough decisions have to be made. I'm a single mother of four, so believe me when I say that I know the importance of budgeting. I truly do. Sadly, this is also where our common understanding ends. This is due to the fact that Superintendent Raymond does not seem to understand the importance of prioritizing. You see, we want to share the same vision that our children come first and that we put our child's best interest at the heart of every decision we make. Today, this vision does not ring true on your part, as we unfortunately no longer stand together. I have a son who is currently in the Huang Immersion Program here at Susan B. Anthony. He started the program last year as a kindergartner who spoke only English. Today, he is a first grader still in the program, and he not only speaks Huang, but he can write and read in Huang. I am amazed at his progress and I hold his, his teachers and the principal accountable. It is their relentless support and knowledge that has helped my son to succeed. I do not believe in the possibility that the program can do well at another school, especially one that already has a Spanish immersion program, that will have their hands full. The success of the program is already guaranteed here at Susan B. Anthony. Superintendent Raven, your, your decision to close your school down is a risk that will interrupt our children's learning and limit their choices. We ask that you rethink your decision with our our concerns in mind, and board members, please vote no on the decision to close down our school. Thank you very much. Good evening, Superintendent, Mr. Raymond, and school board members. My name is Avery Kebaba. I am a student for Sister B. Anthony. I have been in that school for two years. I don't want the school to get closed because I still have one younger brother and two older sisters. 